Hello and welcome back to the On Track video cast. I'm your host, Karen Martell from Karen Martell Nutrition. And today we are talking about mindfulness and meditation and how that can affect your life, both with your health, your weight, and just what you're bringing in from, you know, law of attraction to, you know, de-stressing your life and how it just all of it affects, can affect every piece of your life. I have the expert with me on mindfulness and meditation. She is a certified life coach with a focus on mindful transformation techniques and energy management. Welcome, Pam McCall. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here this um this is such a good subject to have um, with people that are um, struggling with weight um, and needing to de-stress and all the things that go with weight. It's not, you know, not, not always about food. And so I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes, I'm, a, I'm always trying to explore every aspect of what could be impacting somebody's health and weight. And I really, truly believe the lack of meditation and mindfulness and positivity and gratefulness all has a huge impact on really whether or not you're successful with your weight loss efforts. I really believe that. So I'm super happy to have you here. So I know that you um, come from actually a flooring business. Yeah. So how did you go from that, Pam, into becoming a mindful, transformational coach, life coach? Well, um, we have, a, we have a, a flooring business in Missouri that we've had for, we just celebrated our 40th year, actually. Um, and after, oh gosh, close to 30 years, um, I was in my office and I just was sitting there looking around. It's almost like I was out of body. I it really just was like, I was just seeing it for a different view that I've never seen it before. And I said, I was no longer contributing to nor receiving from this business. I was filing papers the same way I'd always filed them. I was uh, paying payroll the same way I'd always paid it. And I wasn't creative and it was depleting all my energy. It, every day, it just depleted and depleted. And I finally was aware. It was like an aha moment that just happened. I mean, I snapped and happened. And I thought, wow, I've got to change this. This is literally killing me. Um, I got up, I walked into my husband's office and shut the door. And I said, we need to talk. I said, I'm going to quit. And he said, you got to be kid, what it was wrong. You know, he just, he didn't even know it's better. Um, and I told him what I just told you. And I said, this is not good for me. And um, I said, I won't just walk out. I'll get someone that can handle the office. You know, I said, but I'm going to work my way out of this. And he said, do you know what you're going to do? And I said, I don't know really what I'm going to do, but I, I have to do something for me. That's something that lights me up. And I'm thinking about life coaching one thing led to another and I got certified and um, started life coaching and, um, and that's kind of what happened. And I still go back. I spent four months working there this summer. My daughter, we, I recruited her into our office and she had a baby and uh, took four months off. And so I, I still bounce back and forth between that, but my mindset's different now when I go there and um, my mindset is different period since then because I changed everything going forward. Wow. And so now here I am. Yeah. Wow. I love that. So leading up to the point where you had your aha moment, were you, what were your signs and symptoms? Like, were you getting sick in your body? Were you unhappy or was it just kind of a boom, a realization in that moment? One, I was just totally unfulfilled, I, just completely unfulfilled. Definitely had um, weight issues. Um, but I just um, I didn't know what I wanted anymore. I absolutely didn't know. I could, you could, I couldn't told you what would make me happy. If someone said, what would make you happy? What we could, could we do for you right now? I couldn't have told you what that was. I just wasn't. I tell people now you have to take responsibility for your life. And I realized looking back that I wasn't taking responsibility for my life. I was letting other people dictate what was, um, what was urgent or important for me to do. You know, even the business, you know, whoever was getting their floor installed that day, that was, that was important to them. And so we took care of them or our kids or my husband or whatever, you know, we give so much of our energy away 
to other people's agendas and mm -hmm. we don't re we never we don't get it back and um eventually that depletes and depletes uh, it's like trickling out and then pretty soon there's nothing left and i just um i was just so darn unhappy extremely unhappy i hurt everywhere um i just I just, I, I hated my husband at the time. I absolutely hated him because I was so unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, that's all changed. And I just hated really that I wasn't doing the right thing for me. That's really what I hated. Um, yeah. I, think I was mad at myself for not taking responsibility for myself. Yeah. But amazing how it was, how it was showing up in all the areas of your life. Like you yeah. said, like you hated your husband when really it was had to do with the fact that you hated your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I actually, um, I actually developed a, a very hard, harsh um, addiction to Dr. Pepper to soda. Um, what during this process that I'm now still struggling with, like any addiction, you know, you kind of struggle with it. Um, yeah. But I, because it was what kept me going. It was, um, it was uh, instant gratification. Yeah. Um, it it raised. Um, the energy for that moment. Of course, it crashes down. As we all know, it comes crashing down later. <laughs> so you take more and you raise it up again. You know, the whole, that whole thing. And so that caused, that's the other thing that really caused a lot of, a lot of uh, problems in my body. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I really appreciate the, the truthfulness because I think everybody has some sort of fix that they turn to. Yours is Dr. Pepper, right? Yeah. yeah. I really like coffee personally. <laughs> Well, I, I do, I do stuff. limit mine, but I do, I could drink more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we never get addicted to water. It's just no. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> or vegetables. Oh, I'm so addicted to vegetables. Yeah, I can't stop eating them. Yeah, I can't stop. Please, someone help me. So when somebody comes to you, like, can you just explain a little bit what it is a mindfulness coach and energy management? What does that mean for people that are new to this? Because in, so let me just back up for the people that aren't in the program on, in the on track program this month, our focus is on meditation and mindfulness. We have a 30 day meditation challenge coming and Pam has has given us some amazing med meditation and mindfulness um, audios to listen to throughout the pro for, throughout the month. So, just as an introduction to it, what is the what is this? What is energy management and mindfulness techniques? Okay. Well, first of all, if you don't if you don't start main find a way to maintain your energy, um, you it's it's I don't know how struggling with your weight is. Um, it's just going to make it a lot harder. So when you start, first of all, you have to take responsibility for, mm -hmm. for your part in all this. Um, but mindfulness directs your focus back to the present. Okay. That's what mindfulness does. So if you are worried about um, what someone said about you yesterday, what the ki that the kids left their homework at home and you've got to run it to them, you know, that someone needs clean socks today and, um, you know, you've got a hair appointment at two, but um, the dog got away before you left and, and pretty soon your, your energy starts here and it comes out and it just does this, right? And it thins. You could see where that would just thin it out. Um, mindfulness actually retracts it and pulls it back in. Mm -hmm. So it draws the focus back into the present. Well, mindfulness can be... Um, Right now, we are focusing on delivering a message to your members. Um, but what if I was checking my text and um, answering the phone and writing someone an email while I was, um, see how my energy would be spread out and, and everybody's not getting the best of me during that time. So I'm focused now on what, on what we're doing here. So if you're, it, they'll get a PDF actually that will explain this, that'll help them, I think. Um, mm -hmm. but one of the things is if you're going to eat, eat, you know, if you're going to cook, cook, um, if you're going to bathe, bathe. Um, I can't tell you how many times I caught myself in the bathtub with the computer propped up oh. um, <laughs> yeah, listening to something. I should be bathing and taking it in. Instead, I'm, you know, I've got another program going in my head. So, so whenever you, whatever you do, if you're working with your kids, work with your kids, um, whatever you do, do that. And that's presence. That's, that's being present actually. Um, and there's all kinds of ways to do that. Go ahead. 
Like you mean, so when you're saying like when you're cook, cook. So what you're saying is when you're cooking dinner, really focus on what you're actually doing in that moment. And I know from my own practice, this is not exactly an easy process when you first start out because we're so used to going off in a million directions in our brain that to just focus and stay still. And, you know, I remember reading once, like just even start with when you brush your teeth. Like Brushing. just be mindful of exactly what you're doing in that moment. Well, actually, I'm glad you said that because that's a really good example for your members. If you know, if they ever want to know where to start out with mindfulness or, or start out with meditation, meditation starts with mindfulness. You got to pull yourself back in before you meditation is just a state of mind. It's right. a state of resting and transforming the brain. That's what meditation is. And mindfulness is a way to direct your focus back to the present. So if you want to get to a state of meditation, and you're just starting out, then you start with mindfulness. And that's just like you said, that's a great way to start. That's a habit that you have every morning or whenever you get up, you know, whenever they get up, if they go to it's It's a, um, something that you do every day. So start there. That's a great way to start. You know, just I'm brushing my teeth. Like, where am I brushing my teeth? Instead of brushing your teeth and you're walking around your house, you know, what else? <laughs> you know, you got your coffee going and you're still brushing your teeth. And um, I know I've gone in and started the microwave while I was brushing my teeth, gone back in, just all kinds of stuff. And so that's not mindfulness when you're doing that, you know, um, that is scattered. That's scattering your energy and thinning it out. And so that, that's a perfect example of a way that anybody can start actually. Yeah. And I found that when I, and I still find it sometimes that because I'm used to being such a busy person. And I think that women nowadays, this is the case in most, in most families anyways, is that women, we are really busy right now. And to sit still and be present in the moment almost gave me a sense of, I would say it gave me a sense of anxiety to when I first started where I was like, Oh, but there's, but I could be doing this. And it was almost like your brain so badly wants to go to all the different things that need to be done today. And I, my practice is always in the morning. And so I just sit there with like no lights on my TVs off, like no computer. And I just make myself sit in the silence and just be present and look at everything that's around me. But starting out, it actually gave me anxiety to do that because I so badly wanted to go off in so many different places inside my brain. Well, and, and just and just so the, the members are aware, don't you find that sometimes you come back to that anxiety? It's according to what's going on in your life. It's harder at times than it is yes. others. Well, I don't want them to think that they're failing or something. Uh, just, you know, they don't need that. Um, it's, it's just, it, it's just a, it's just a state of being, it's a practice. And so, um, you just, just come back to it. Just, just keep coming back to it. And, um, and if it, if the best way I can tell them to look at it is, is from an observation point. If you just think when you're doing mindfulness that you're going to observe or meditation, just when you go into it, going into it from a state of observance and so that way it's not a state of judgment it's a state of observance and so as your thoughts filter in and filter out and so you're trying to get quiet and then you start thinking oh shoot i forgot to pay the electric bill you know and then you okay i'm back in i'm back in again and then pretty soon you're thinking oh shoot oh shoot i forgot to you know whatever you forgot to do so as those come in just observe the thoughts don't try to even figure them out don't try to to do anything, just say, oh, look at that. I forgot to pay the electric bill. That thought came in right. um, and watch it go out. And then I'm, but I'm still going as thoughts are coming and going. And so just come from a place of observance, not judging and you'll, and it'll, it'll be much easier. Mm, I like that. I actually heard a guy say once, just remember you're the thinker of your thoughts. You're not your thoughts. And I, that's, I'll say that to myself when I'm trying to just be observing. And I just think, remember that's not me that's my thoughts and i just watch them like you said pass on by right come in and go back out and say, wow look at that thought would you um, <laughs> look at that guys i'm just noticing a thought yeah 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 so i was going through your website and just checking you out and i noticed this great little i don't know if it's great or not but this little thing that i wanted to talk to you about it it said that women tend to lead fear-based lifestyles, especially fear of change or claiming your own wants and needs 
are depleting us of happiness and our true potential. So why do you think that is, Pam? I agree with it 100%. Yeah. Because they're not taking responsibility for their own life. They're looking for right. permission to be good enough, to give enough, to make a big enough difference in life. That's why. They're looking for permission that, look at me. Am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? Does this make you happy? Does this make you happy? Um, they're looking for permission. And so, you know what? I'm going to give it to them right now. <laughs> you have permission to be the way that you want to be. Show up in life the way you want to show up. You have to care about the way you feel. You have to. You have to care how a food makes you feel. You have to care about how a a show that a movie that you watch makes you feel you have to care about how clothes feel on your body if you put something on that feels too tight and too confining when you go out into the world you're going to feel too tight and too confining um when you're around people and so when you do enough of that and that you don't care enough about how you feel you let someone else dictate how you should feel and so you're always looking for permission to see if you're right. And so you've got to start taking responsibility for your own life. I love that. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. You know, talk that way a little bit too. You know, what is the word selfish? Um, you know, and they say, oh my gosh, it's so selfish. And, you know, really we should be selfish because whenever yeah. you take care of you, everything in your vicinity, your inner circle changes. And that's really what we, and that what we would, want to thrive for, you know, for I, uh, eventually. Yeah. I really think, believe that if women would just get that piece, like just be selfish. Yeah. Just be selfish. Yeah. Just be selfish. Damn it. <laughs> Take the month of April and be selfish. Just be do selfish. I do find, and I was going to ask you this when you're talking about your own story. Uh, can you tell me what age you were? Do you remember? Well, around? Um, I'm going to turn 60 this year. And so I was mid fifties. Mid fifties. Uh, I left. Yeah. I do find in my own practice um, and even in my own life that it seems to me that women certainly go through that shift when they are over the age of 40 up until their mid fifties where yeah. they they get unsettled in life. And I think it's because it is that time in their life where they finally do want to actually ask themselves what they want, not what everybody else wants. The kids have usually grown up by this point or getting older. You've, you're married or you've kicked the husband out at this point. You know, you've got your career nailed down or whatever. It's just that time. There's a, a hormonal shift, a mental shift where we start to go, Ooh, what do I want? And it surfaces, like it comes up and it shows up in being unhappy, depressed, overweight, chronic illness. Would you, do you agree with that? Do you find that in your own practice? And inflammation. Uh, you would be surprised. And inflammation. Inflammation. Um, meditation helps with that, by the way. But um, my daughter is, uh, has celiac. And so we've gone through the gamut of, um, of throughout her life of uh, non-dairy. And because we found out that most celiacs can't handle dairy because of leaky gut and um, all that stuff. And, um, and I know you speak to that a lot to your members and that you've had special plans even for that. So that's great. Um, but the, um, I, I lost track where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> it, how, it, how, when women are in that stage of their life where they start oh, yeah. to think about themselves and <laughs> you know, how, Speaking of that stage. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. We won a lot on that stage of our life. To be honest, it's not all, it's not all hormonal, although it, it does have something to do with it. A lot of it is just giving your energy away. And me and you were talking actually before we got yes. on scattered today was. And and this is this is one of those effects that we blame on other things. But um, you know, whenever you deplete your energy, you also get scatterbrained a little bit. So don't absolutely be so bad about it you know when that happens just do something to fill your energy cup back up yeah yeah change your change your state that's what i always yeah. say okay what do i need to do here to change my state and even right before this before we started talking just so everybody knows this behind the scenes what happened we were both like we kind of came into our conversation and our in our video kind of 
from a crazy day and I had clients all day and she had been out and about and I was like, okay, I'm going to hit record. And then we both were like, okay, whoa, wait, <laughs> wait just a minute. And Pam actually brought me through just this like 30 second grounding. We just paid attention to our heart for a second. And it was like, literally we changed our state within less than a minute, didn't we? Well, and that's what I want to say. Some, I want to actually want to, um, it's funny how this is all coming together, but um, I want to talk about that a little bit. People, a lot of people that don't meditate on a regular basis think it has to be this long drawn out thing. And it doesn't, it can happen in a moment just like that. You can, and of course we were in a state of meditation at that moment. It was mindfulness, but mindfulness takes you to a state of meditation. Um, but it can happen instantly. You don't have to get in this big state to have to make a difference in your life. Um, and if you wonder actually how, what could you do? You know, like how just, we had a moment, we had to just calm her. We were going to be a little crazy. Um, you can always go back and touch base with your organs like that. That's actually one way you could do it. So start thinking about your heart and think about where is my kidneys and where are my liver inside and, and, and where is your digestive tract and, and just try to imagine and, um, or send love to it or whatever. You don't have to do anything, but just try to think about where it's at. And it literally takes you right back into your body. Um, I anyway. love that. Thank you for saying that because I think for, for a lot of people, they assume that you have to get into a state in order to meditate or be mindful. And they also, I think, a preconceived idea is that you have to go blank inside your head. And that's awesome. That's such a great tool just to be like, you know what, just simply go inside, you know, feel your heart, feel, you know, figure it all out on what's going on inside there. And it does, it instantly changes how you feel energetically, I think. Well, meditation um, can, can be so quick. Um, it it's not it's not meant to sit there for hours on end like monks did. And um, we're in a different world. We're in a fast paced world, and this helps instantly. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Literally, they can try it for themselves. They've got all April to start using this stuff and and seeing for yourself. It can change. Um, it literally can change overnight, and it does. Um, is just pull yourself back in. I'm actually giving them a, um, the, uh, there's a PDF that uh, accompanies an audio and it's called calming your senses. And it literally makes you do kind of like what we did, but you kind of pay attention to all your, your hearing, seeing all that kind of senses. And it takes you back into it. And I teach this to a lot of people that use it in times of stress. And I had a client that had, was losing, hadn't lost, but was losing her husband any time at that time. Mm. And she uh, Facebooked me and said, I'm in crisis. What do I do? I don't, I can't calm down. I can't get it calmed down. I don't know what to do. People are here. I can't get it together. And so I jumped on the, a call with her and she went into her bedroom by herself. And literally we walked through this little one minute practice and I said, take it serious. I know it's, it's something small, but take it serious. And she, she immediately calmed down, like immediately. And then she had told me later, she goes, I, sometimes I did that 25 times a day. She Aww. said, I would go in the bathroom by myself and do this one minute thing. And the, and they're going to get the instructions to that. And it literally changed her life. She said, she said it really kept her calm in times of high stress. Oh, I love that. And so easy to, to implement something that simple and so quick, but with such profound effect, right? Well, and you had mentioned something, you had, you had brought up the fact that everybody thinks you have to clear your mind. Your mind is, is you don't want to shut your mind down. It's, it's turned on for a reason, <laughs> uh, but you do want to declutter it. And so that's really all you're doing. You're decluttering the mind so that the thoughts and things can come through. And if you do that and you learn the language of the universe, which are signs, symbols, and synchronicity, and you'll start getting ideas that come in when you're in that state of, of um, just consciousness. And, and it'll be memories that pop up. It'll be thoughts that come in. It'll be ideas. And those last long after you're done meditating, you know, throughout your day or the week, if you're on a regular basis. But um, if you start learning to watch for those things, the universe is speaking to you all the time in signs, symbols, and synchronicities. And so some of that is bringing up memories. And if you can kind of get in touch with, with the feeling of that memory, that me that's giving you a message. And so that's really all you're doing is letting all that come in and quieting and everything else. But you're not shutting your mind off by any stretch of the imagination. 
No. And when it comes, like we just, our last month, we did a lot of work around law of attraction. And I know you're really big into that too. So where does meditation fit into the law of attraction or does it? Yeah. Because I'll tell you what happens when you make a practice of mindfulness and meditation, what happens is the combination of the two then um, allows, allows a manifestation to happen in your reality. And so um, I was practicing that really hard the last couple of weeks because I was finishing up a course that I had taken. And this past week, I can't tell you, and I haven't told you this yet, but I will, I will tell you off air because I want to name the person. But um, there was a program that I wanted to be in, um, a woman's program. And um, because I had commented on how gracious and how um, much content that she provided for free, to the uh, members that she saw that and emailed me and gifted me a program that I had been looking at. In no person. way. $497. And I wasn't sure I was ready to invest in that part of it. And I got it gifted to me yesterday. Um, <laughs> that was from being aligned. I literally was walking around going, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm aligned. I'm aligned. I was just so tickled that I was aligned. <laughs> I love it. And that is the difference in when you're practicing mind. Now, mindfulness is a practice. Meditation is a state. Okay. So you can get into the state of meditation is a practice. It's a discipline. Um, but the, the meditation is, is the, the consciousness. It's like when you remove um, everything, all the other parts except the consciousness, that's what, that's, you're in that state of meditation where you don't really notice the other sounds and the, uh, not that you can't, people would come in and talk to you, you know, and they would break you out of that. But you're, <laughs> I'll tell you a good way to explain meditation is if, if you have any creative people in your group, have you ever been painting or crafting or working with clay or, um, uh, drawing, uh, playing music, um, that kind of thing. And when you know when you're in it so much, and then I know a lot of people with vision boards, look, just really get into this, you know, what they're doing with the vision board. And then when they look up and it's like, oh my gosh, three hours has passed. I had no idea. They were literally in a state um, of meditation in that time. So meditation can come from all kinds of things. Uh, but creativity is a really good way to get there. Yeah. And people think that to meditate, you got to sit there with your back up against a wall or on a pillow, which is a great way, it is but a good, yeah. it can happen in other ways too. I used to do body work and the really great sessions would happen when I had that state, when I would just suddenly just get so into what I was doing that the time would just go by like that. And I'd kind of be like, Oh, Oh my goodness. Like what happened there? And that was mindfulness or meditation, consciousness. That is the state of meditation, yeah. And it's I've done that at the gym before where I've been working out and just really focused on what I'm doing. And I look at it and I thought, oh my gosh, it's time to go home. And other times I've counted every rep there. Every single minute, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only 10 minutes went by. <laughs> yes, yes. I was going to say sports definitely is a yeah thing for some people in order to drop into that it's easy for them like rock climbing i've heard is really good for that and hiking um, and, and gonna, nature actually, on one of the pdfs it's gonna it's gonna be they're gonna get a list of things that raise your energy and so that you can get into these states and so and and practice the mindfulness and stuff. mindfulness leads into meditation and so you want to start practicing mindfulness and it's it's a state for me it's a state of being in life um not that I don't get off of it. I don't mean that because I do. And then I'll just, oh gosh, I'm, I'm too scattered. I, I got to get back into it. Well, we just did it today. We were all yeah. scattered. I wasn't in practicing mindfulness, believe me, before I got home today. Yeah. <laughs> every, I was dropping stuff. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Sometimes and then, we have to have a Dr. Pepper and then we'll get back to it. Right, Pam? <laughs> I literally suck that thing now. I have like, to have a coffee or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I would like to say that, you know, because we are talking about weight, that yes. one thing they could do that they could experiment with the month of April is whenever you eat, pay attention to what the food looks like before you eat it, what smell it. You know, when wine people, you know, they test yeah. wine, they swirl it and they, they like, they really get into it. Kind of do that with your food a little bit and pay attention. And then whenever you're chewing it, what is the texture? 
um, you know, what does it feel like when you're done eating that actually? Don't judge how you feel. If you're all bloated and stuff, that's not, it, it doesn't matter. You're just, you're just observing. How did that make me feel? You're still being mindful. Yeah. And then you can adjust things, you know, whatever, whatever don't feel right. But if you're not paying attention to how you feel when you're eating that food or taking that snack, you could go ahead and say, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to accept that I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. And I'm going to be okay that I done it. I'm not going to beat myself up because I did it, but I'm going to enjoy every stinking bit of it. When I do, I'm not going to just eat, um, under stress. I'm going to, I'm going to eat these cookies, but I'm going to enjoy every single darn morsel of that cookie. I'm going to, the texture, the, the, um, the flavors, the, can you pick out the salt and the sweet in it? Like whatever you have to do to enjoy that. Um, will slow you down. It'll make you appreciate it more and just see what happens. I'd like to, I, I hope they come back to you and let you know what they, what happened. Yes. I hope that too. I, it's, a, it's a tool that I often tell clients like, okay, if you're, if you want the ice cream or the chocolate or whatever is your vice, then I want you to do it mindfully. I want you to sit with it. I want you to enjoy it. Um, the other thing I always say is like, have a couple squares of chocolate, enjoy it and then walk away for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, if you really want it, then damn right, go back and have some more. And so once again, eat it mindfully. Don't beat yourself up for it. Like enjoy it because we tend to, it's like we think we won't notice to our, it's this weird, I, I do it myself and I'll catch myself. It's like you get onto something sweet and you're just like, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to ignore the fact that I'm starting to feel sick and that the whole thing of hogan does is almost gone. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. So, everybody's going to get off of this. I'm just going to go get a snack right now. Yeah, yeah totally. We're going to have to talk celery for a little bit. Yeah. We're backfiring. <laughs> See, um, th that is, I'm glad you teach like that because, um, there's no sense having guilt wrapped up. It's, you're going to see that actually on one of the things. It's one of the lower emotions with the lowest energy you can have is guilt. And if you eat with guilt, um, just don't do it. Just, just eat with permission, you know, yeah. eat with permission, but be mindful about it. Mm -hmm. And so how, can, maybe you can't answer this, but how would meditation and a mindfulness practice help a person in the end to lose weight, basically, like if somebody was continually practicing this, could it affect their weight in your eyes? Well, it's, it, to me, it's the difference, um, in scratching and clawing to get over a fence versus getting a ladder and climbing to the top and just hopping over. It's, it's, I guess you can get there eventually, but man, why, why struggle? You know, why struggle with it? Um, mindfulness is, they're teaching it now in the prisons. They're teaching it in schools. Um, it's going to be mainstream very well. It already is, but it'll be yeah. a lot really soon. Um, the one thing that I, because my daughter has celiac that I was shocked to find out is that it, it gets, it helps alleviate inflammation. And so she practices that and we could just, we could tell after she started like her face, the inflammation was kind of coming off of her body. And um, so if, if, um, so give me some examples of what people uh, struggle with in, in your industry. Mm -hmm. and we'll talk um, a big one, of course, is self-image. Okay. Well, that's good because um, one of the uh, audios is on self-acceptance um, and how Perfect. you see yourself. And so one thing I want to say about that is make sure what the thoughts you're thinking are true. Okay. Do, I have, do you have time for a little um, story with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so... I'm going to write this down so I know what we, what we were talking about so I can come back to, to where, <laughs> you get me back to where we started, okay? Yeah. No, I'll let you do that. Um, so I was working with a, um, one of my clients, life coaching, and she was, she had um, tremendous grief from losing too many people in a short period of time in her life. Um, a husband, a, a, her father, a husband, and then a fiance. And she just, she said, I was in a state for five years that I couldn't get out of this grief cycle. And so um, anyway, she came to me and literally changed that day, that hour that we were there um, because she said, I'm just not going to be able to look at anything in a positive light. And so we worked on her, but um, I was, we were working together. We got off the phone and after we had worked with her for a while, she decided she wanted another live um, being in the house with her. And she, she went out of state and got this kitten. 
that she was in love with. And so this one day we got off the phone and she said she would noticed that she couldn't, she hadn't found the kitten. So she looked all over and was starting to get worried. And then she starts getting, you know, scared. And then she called her friends and she's in a panic and said, come help me, come help me. I can't find the cat. And to her, it was crazy time. And um, so they come over and they looked inside, outside, they looked everywhere. And she said, I thought I saw something move outside. I think it got out and it's never going to come back. So she completely got on that hamster wheel till it got worse and it got worse and momentum started and she was just going nuts. And she ended up, she said on her, her front driveway, screaming at God. And she said, every time I love something, you take it away. Why are you did it again? Why did you take my cat? Every time I love something, you take it away. I don't know what to do. She said, I screamed and hollered and I got up and I turned around to come back in the house. And she's, my friends were standing in the big picture window looking at her like, we're, we're so sorry. She said, I walked in and as I did, she said, I saw a little tail go underneath the dishwasher. And she said, that cat is going in and out of the dishwasher. <laughs> she goes over there and there was just a hole big enough for that cat to, you know, kind of sleek in and out. So she got a toy and waited and out the cat came. So all that was for nothing because the cat was having a good old time. And she said, I just, why does that happen though? And I said, I said, what is it? What happened? She goes, God always does that to me. I said, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I said, he didn't take anything away from you. He didn't, you love that cat and your cat wasn't missing. You just didn't know where it was, but the cat wasn't missing. And so you're telling, you're still telling yourself, even after finding the cat, that if you love something, it will be taken away from you. So from that story, I want to tell your members to make sure the thoughts you're thinking are, are real. Make sure they're real. If you think you're not, you look in the mirror and you're, and all you say is I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat. That's really not true. You might have some extra weight, but you're so much more than the weight that's on your body. And if that's what you're telling yourself, stop it and start listing all the good things that you can about yourself, but make sure that every thought, and this is going to take a process, but every thought you think is real because you're going to believe your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So make sure they are the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that goes back to what we were talking about, self-image, um, mm -hmm. struggle with self-image. So one of the things that mindfulness does is it takes you back to center, back into yourself. You learn to have more compassion for yourself. You learn to appreciate yourself. It also helps with loneliness so that pretty soon when you're meditating and stuff, you realize that you're not the only one here, that there's other things going on in your life um, beyond your control that are here to help you though. Um, and so it helps so much with that. So Ooh, I like that. eventually you'll get to a state, you'll start releasing some of these um, issues or struggles that you have. And so it's, and the other thing is when you calm and you de-stress, then you don't have all those triggers, you know, to want to eat whatever it is, it's whatever's causing your weight to even inflammation causes weight gain. It, it, you yes. can not eat a whole bunch, but have stress causes inflammation. And so meditation releases that. So just release it all. Yeah. I would have to say that the, probably the number one cause of weight loss resistance that I see in my practice is from stress because it raises their cortisol sometimes so high for such a long period that, and then it drops really low and that alone, your body is just in this state of stress that it won't let go of the fat. And it's probably the hardest thing that women have wrapping their heads around because we live in a stressful society. This is not normal to our bodies, what we're doing right now. And so I feel that meditation can have some of the largest impact on somebody's weight just for that alone. Like all the, and this is science. This is, yeah. I've read about it and I know you have too. Like it's proven fact that it improves your hormonal levels when it comes to stress. It does. It, it literally does. And actually get into your body and getting in touch with your organs will help too. It really, it truly does. You bring everything back to center and um, meditation. The number one thing meditation is, is good for is de-stressing period. Yeah. So create some kind of a practice, a daily routine. I don't care. Literally, I don't care if it's 60 seconds, but yeah. do it on a regular basis. Um, do it for five minutes, do it, whatever, whatever's right for you. Um, and start with mindfulness. 
Pick, you know, start with breath if you need to. Just notice notice your breath. Like, how are you breathing? We kind of did that actually a little bit today, even though we, we started with the heart, but we're, we're, we're calming the breath down a little bit. Um, pay attention to, sit there and, and imagine what is it, what does the temperature in the room feel like on my skin? Can I feel the temperature on my body? Can I actually feel the temperature on my face? Like really try to feel that. And that will bring you back down and focused on you. Um, and as you do these mindfulness uh, techniques that I'm, that I'm giving them, um, whenever they get done to get to go into a state then of meditation, they can work on the mindfulness. And then they, I think I, I told this to you the other day, they can just simply repeat one word. And so I'm going to give them love because it has a lot to do with self-acceptance. And so let's say they've gone through the mindfulness practice and then they're laying there at night and they just start repeating the word love. And so it's just love, 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 love. And then I want you to try to say it. You're not, you don't have to say it out loud anyway, but in your head, try to let it actually convert to an echo so that you're hearing it, but you're almost not repeating it um, as a thought. It, you're just hearing it and just let that go and just let that go. And then pretty soon you'll be surprised that you went to sleep somewhere. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think so a lot of people would like that. <laughs> and that's a great way to meditate. It's a great way to end the day with loving yourself like that. It's just, it just is. And then you wake up, you know, in a different state because if you'll calm the chatter in your brain before you go to bed, then all your mind has to do is help you to rest. It doesn't have to sort out the day for you. Mm. And so that's also a way to de-stress. I like that. I usually do gratefulness. And what just came to my mind there was, it's almost when you're doing that, when you're saying the love repeatedly to yourself, you're actually turning that gratefulness onto yourself that you're grateful for you, which I don't think many people do that. They don't think we're, we're constantly going, we're grateful for all of these things in our lives, but when are we ever grateful for us? I don't think ever. Good point. I think that's a good, that's good that they could, it's time to appreciate yourself. It's just time. It's just time. So what are the, you have two audios for us. You don't have to go into too much detail, but um, just a little overview of what you've given the group uh, as far as audios go. Okay. The first one will help you in, um, it's a, you can practice it every day. I would at least practice it in the morning, practice it in the evening. It's literally 60 seconds. Practice it in any time you're feeling overwhelmed, uh, anxiety, um, or just feel like you want to do it, it because it, it, um, uh, you know, one accumulates. Stack. Yeah. Yeah. Accumulates. Yep. <laughs> um, and so that's one of them. And then the other one is about, it's, it's about uh, reflection and you walk through and you look in these different mirrors. And I do want to say, as you're doing this and you're listening to it, try, let whatever shows up in the mirror show up. Don't try to put something into the mirror. Observe, observe what's in your reflection when you do this exercise and whatever comes up, just observe and let it go through. <clears throat> let your let your mind and your heart work together to bring you whatever message it wants. It could be memories. It could be how you see yourself different or whatever it is and go through this. And when you get done, um, it's just a way to, it's a self-reflection, and so, but it's actually for self-acceptance. Oh, I love that. It's great. I'm excited. I'm going to, I've already listened to the first one, the quick one, and it's great. And you're right. You can, I, I was doing it in my office the other day, just in between clients. And it just helped me to just, immediately, yeah. you know, come into my body and yeah. ground myself and all those great things, right? Yeah. Well, and then, so when they get in that, when they start with mindfulness and they get to a state uh, and then they uh, practice meditation also, they get into a state that the law of attraction, then you raise your energy. And when you raise your energy, you'll, things will come to you that match that energy. So you can either attract things that are down here and this energy level, uh, you know, frantic and anxiety ridden, or you can attract things to you that are up here in this level. And that's one reason I didn't really want to start this. And I'm sure you didn't either on a state of anxiety when we got on here, because I don't want to portray that to the members when they watch it. And so we, we had to clean that up a little bit. <laughs> when we're trying to talk about mindfulness and meditation, we need to practice what we preach. <laughs> Come in calm, not all frazzled, right? So I know that you have a great little Facebook group that's a little new, isn't it? It's about a month going now. It's actually new by 
request. Um, yes, I love that. Asking me to open it's it's about how to create positivity. They were like, "How do I get positive right now?" That's what they kept saying. So I just named it that. How to create positive. A positive change in your life starting now. That's what I named it because that's what they kept saying. And there's only like a 40 some people in there right now. I don't know when someone's going to watch this. That'll change. But they are very active in there and they're really looking to change. I'm getting a lot of private messages too. Um, and so you're there. Your members are very welcome to find that. I'll give you the link to it. Perfect. Um, and it's called How to Create Positive Change Starting Now. See, I so, love yeah. that, and it's great. I've been I've been in it now for. Uh, since last, since Friday, I think only a couple days, right? I can't remember, but it is, it's just little snippets. So it's just, it's going to help you on your journey of incorporating these things into your life. She makes it really easy. She always has really nice little tools in there that you can get started on right now on creating that positive change in your life. So it's, it's fantastic. And you also have a website too. And do you still do the one-on-one -on -one coaching if somebody's interested in kind of diving deeper into this? I do. I actually have been, um, I actually don't have anything on my side for they would have to contact me because it's all been word of mouth so far. My one-on-one -on -one coaching has, I've just never had to put it on there. Um, it's all kind of one-on-one, -on -one, but I do, and I welcome it. Um, and that is Pam McCall.com two M's, two C's and two L's and Pam McCall. <laughs> I'll That's link to it. <laughs> Yes, I will link to it. And you can contact her even through Messenger on Facebook as her and I, that's how we connected. And if you want to dive deeper, I, I recommend her and that you phone and just do it and start, yeah. you know, working with her and getting going on this because I think life can get a lot better. It right, can. Pam? <laughs> I will. I, it can and it has, and, and, and it will stay that way. That's okay. It'll, it's always going to ebb and flow, and yeah. that's okay. We want that. You know, who, that'd be boring otherwise. But uh, on my, I, will link, I will give you a link to all their gifts, um, and, but I'll also, if you go to pammccall.com forward slash Karen, it will also be there. So however you get there is good, but she's also going to put a link in the, in the members area. Yes. And Pam is actually at the moment a member of On Track. So you can also just tag her in a oh, post in there even. <laughs> I know. I forgot about that. So that's great, right? Okay. Well, thank you, Pam. I really appreciate it. It's been an amazing conversation. I hope people got a lot of insight out of that. And if you want to hear more from Pam, you can go to her Facebook or message her, however or, you want to get a hold of her. Yeah. That's, that'd be perfect. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm glad that you're presenting this to your members. I'm, I'm tickled for them to, to be introduced to this. Yes. Awesome. Okay. We'll see you later. Thank you so much.